Yeah, hey, good morning. I've got a few new tools that I wanted to show. Um, so let's jump into it. So the first one is, um, I did end up going for a three-quarter Milwaukee gun after doing that um, that trackpad video. Um, I really got a lot of response back from people who watched it who had experience with the um, a three-quarter gun or the one-inch gun, and um, I really appreciate that. So I ended up going with the three-quarter gun because it fit in, the, in the, the space that I have left, I'm kind of running out of room. And, uh, um, you know, it seemed like it fit just about as uh, as hard as the one-inch, too. So, um, so anyhow, this is what I ended up doing. And as you can see, um, these are my three-quarter um, so impact sockets. So I've got the deep on the right and then the standard on the left. And so I had a little bit of space um, and I had a, a, a scrap of the Kaizen foam. And uh, sure enough, it, it, the, uh, the three quarter gun fit in there. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, I cut it out and uh, um, I did get a 12 amp hour battery, which that's really critical um, for, for these. Uh, these guns for sure and yeah so it, it worked out pretty well i just wanted to take it take it out and show um there's a plastic place uh tap plastic uh, fairly close by here in town and i got a, a thin sheet of uh, i'm not sure what it is it might be nylon even and i glued that to the bottom because i'm you know it slides in and out on the on the shallow three-quarter um, box that i have there and um so yeah, I've only used it a couple times so far, but I'm really happy with it. It's uh, working well. It seems like a good choice. So who knows? I might end up getting a one-inch gun, but for right now, I got what I need. So yeah, yeah. The the three-quarter set I have the one particularly the deeps. I got those um, I think on, on Craigslist ad, and uh, a guy was selling them. They were as bad as dad had died, and uh, they're all proto. Deep. There were some shallows too, but uh, I got a really good deal, and the guy was happy. He said his dad would be happy that they were getting put to use. So was, he was kind of guy that wouldn't probably didn't know which end they were. So uh, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the first thing I wanted to show you, and uh, yeah, worked pretty good. Yeah, so moving on to this uh, next box, I have a few things here. Um, I guess we'll start at the bottom on it. And, uh, I picked these up. These were on eBay, and it was an open box, um, but they're brand new. And so it's a hose pick set from Mayhew. And um, this big Dominator bar is a Mayhew. I think I talked about it there um, on one of the earlier videos. And, um, I really like Mayhew. You know, they're in Pennsylvania, or no, they're in Massachusetts. I, I thought it was Pennsylvania, but they've been around forever, you know. And um, it's a U.S. company, they're U.S. made, and um, I just like supporting them. Um, I had the boost tube go on this truck a while ago, um, and uh, so, I, you know, I picked up the part, the, the tube, the replacement tube, and for those of you who've had that happen, you know, it goes into the, um, you know, that intake and, and um, or it actually is the exhaust um, out of the turbo, I believe, and, and uh, um, runs down into the intercooler. And that intercooler line, I was afraid that it might be really hard to get off. It's in a really bad spot. So when I picked up the, the uh, part um, from Napa, um, I picked up a pick set from them because I was real, I was just worried about having to disassemble the front end to get that off. As it worked out, it came off really well. And the pick set, I was not impressed by. So I returned that, but I did get these because I think we've all been a place where, um, you know, you have a hose that has to come off and it's hard to get to. So, yeah, so I, I, so far I'm just leaving this in the, uh, um, the box that came in, and uh, it, 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 were, it fits down in there nicely, but 
I like the handle and uh, I really like the picks. The handles are quite hard, um, but uh, I like the grip and uh, yeah, it just seems like a, a you know another nicely made tool for Mayhew. So I'm happy, happy with it. Yeah, so then this thing I've, I've uh, these two tools here I've had for a while, and I meant to mention them a while back, but I didn't. And um, some of you guys may be familiar with them, um, but uh, if not, um, I really recommend them. I, I use these all the time. So what it is, it's called the Gorilla, um, and it's a thread pitch gauge. And so I got, I found them on eBay. I wasn't aware of them, but I found them because I was looking for something, and, and uh, I think they're kind of military, um, you know, designed for the military, perhaps. But uh, so <laughs> this one here is um, the metric, and so I'll, I'll just use that as an example, I guess. And, um, so it's got the bolt size are here. You know, so it's got a full range down. It starts at five millimeter and it runs up to 24. So you can you can size your bolt, your fastener there. <laughs> it tells you what it is. It also tells you what wrench you need for that. And um, then on the other end, it's got the actual thread pitch gauges. And so um, it's just a really handy thing. I, I, I use them. You know, if you have to chase a um, chase a hole for a fastener, um, it's gotten boogered up. But I also use them for checking, you know, the torque value because you know if you get the size and the correct pitch, you can check your torque table. And uh, um, although I torque a lot of my fasteners, I, I'm not at the point where I know, you know, the torque off the top of my head. Especially like in metric, where you have a lot of different pitch sizes, often you know, often the one fastener can have several pitch available. So, um, yeah. So these gorillas, I really recommend. They're well built and uh, they they're handy, and I just I like them. So I I'd, I'd never seen them. But I'm happy that I have them. I use them a lot. So. Yeah. So then the last thing, that tucked back up in there, and these are on these cobalt uh, mag rails, and uh, I think I mentioned one of them. I, I you know, I had a specific need um, for a, a uh, the uh, <coughs> SAE, um, so it's a uh, um, 12 point uh, crow's foot wrench and um, half inch drive. This one's inch and a half, and um, so I had a specific need, um, I think it's for inch and five eighths to fit a number 12 ORS fitting. And it was a bent tube 90 and it was down in a spot where I couldn't quite get on it well. You know, you know how that is. And uh, these are just perfect for that. And so after having good, you know, I was happy with how that worked. And the thing about these versus just like a standard uh, crow's foot which also can be really handy, but these, you know, they're, they, they, you can't give as much torque as you can with a standard crow's foot, um, just because they're a little bit more delicate. But at the same time, they do reach all the way around the hex. And so as long as you're, you're careful with them, um, it, it really can be a lifesaver. And um, I'm, I'm just happy with it. So I ended up, um, on the buncher, and a lot of us have run into this, I think, on buncher hard lines on the on the, on the boom. Um, if you have a fitting, you often have to pull off, you know, one on either side of the hard line you're working on to give you space to get your wrench in there. And um, the uh, on the on the uh, the LX eight seventy. Um, the hard lines are, um, the fitting is inch and three quarters on the hard line itself. And one other thing, so again, about, um, you know, this design of the 12 point crow's foot is that, you know, it, it can, if you got a hydraulic hose going on it, you know, you, you can reach around, um, the hard line itself and slip onto 
the uh, the hard line to hold it. And oftentimes on a hard line, you don't really need to have that much pressure, but you do have to hold it from twisting to break the fitting. And um, sometimes if you're lucky, um, you know, like if it was, a, you know, say a, a one inch or number 16, it'd be inch and five eighths. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can slip on, you know, with one of these onto the, you know, the fitting itself of the hose that you're going to remove. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, once again, it's, uh, there, there's so many, um, <laughs> so many situations uh, that we all run into on you know, kind of a daily basis uh, um, of, you know, like just difficult places or, you know, difficult situations and having the right tool can really just, you know, just be a lifesaver. So, um, yeah. And those cobalt mag rails, I've got all my crow's foot, uh, the different configurations on there. And it, it uh, the, um, the ones that I've I got, I've got a vertical, I've got room for another vertical on the other side. If I get, if I have, have something I need to put there, but I really like those. I got them from Lowe's. They're only like 10 bucks, I think. And uh, they're really rugged. Um, you know, I've got some pretty heavy uh, tools. I think that's two and an eighth, you know, and half inch drive. And I mean, that's that's a heavy, you know, that's a couple pounds there. And I've never had, never lost it, you know, since I put it in there. So um, I recommend them. So anyhow, yeah, a few more, a few more tools for the road. Um, yeah, any comments or questions or you know, stuff you guys are doing. That's uh, always great to hear from you. So, yeah, I hope you find it interesting. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.